Do you really want to go electric? Do EVs really live up to all the hype? To be clear, today's video does not have the goal of hating on electric cars, but there is a gang of EVs coming to the market over the next two years, and they certainly do seem to be the direction the car industry is headed. So it's time for some honest conversation that you've come to expect from us here at The Homework Guy. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, The Homework Guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, The Homework Gal. We hope to give you so much information and great value that you consider subscribing if you're not already on board with us. Here at THG, and by the way, did you notice the lights on the top of the roof? <laughs> We've noticed a very hard push from our government, the current administration, and several environmental activists to go to electric vehicles and to move away from the internal combustion engine, otherwise known as ICE. Mm -hmm. But whenever I am pushed, I always want to know why, don't you? Oh, yeah. They say that gas and diesel powered vehicles pollute too much, <laughs> but they quantify that statement by essentially putting a box around an ICE vehicle and then checking CO2 output. And yes, there is a carbon footprint. Yep. However, on the flip side, they also measure a electric vehicles CO2 footprint the exact same way, which before we're done here today, I think you'll agree with us that it's entirely dishonest and very unfair that yep. they do that. It's not even close to telling the entire story. Interestingly, with the hard push to go to EVs, we've noticed an even harder push to stay away from honest conversation about the downsides and hazards of EVs and lithium batteries. And anytime those so-called fact checkers come out, well, you know <laughs> they are here to defend a lie. So <laughs> what we bring to you today is perhaps a bit of a wake-up call for those of you who have been persuaded to go turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to the reality of EVs in the process. Well, you don't have to take our word on everything we're sharing here today. It's also been covered on TED Talks on a video titled, The Contradictions of Battery-Operated Vehicles, Graham Conway, TEDx San Antonio. I suggest you check it out. In this video, EVs, serious problems that car makers are hiding by Simply Tech. The truth is, EVs have a laundry list of dirty secrets, and we're going to share those here today. A laundry list of dirty secrets, yeah. indeed. The first, and perhaps one of the scariest, is that they are dangerous and a highly volatile fire hazard. Now, while admittedly there are more ICE vehicles than EVs catching fire right now, let me tell you that you don't want to be anywhere nearby when an electric vehicle catches fire. You have only mere seconds to get out of it. Lithium burns ferociously on contact with air, and once ablaze, these blowtorch type fires can be extremely difficult to put out. While burning, lithium ion batteries have been shown to emit toxic quantities of fluoride gas, damaging the environment. Electric vehicle fires often reach temperatures so high that they melt the pavement underneath them and threaten everything around them. That's right, they melt the pavement. <laughs> EV fires are so extremely dangerous and hard to control that the fire departments in most major cities currently aren't properly equipped to handle one when it happens. Wow. A fact that presents a serious hazard to the safety of anyone around the fire. And water only seems to make it worse. This is something many promoters and manufacturers of EVs don't want to admit, but the risk of a dangerous fire is very real when it comes to EV cars, trucks, buses. The unexpected ignition or explosion of battery cells, especially during charging, is a threat to everyone and everything around it. Why are EV fires so volatile? Battery components are designed to be lightweight with thin partitions between the cells and they have a thin outer coating. The partitions or coatings are quite fragile, so they can be easily punctured. If the battery is damaged, a short occurs and this spark can ignite the highly reactive lithium. Like a full tank of gas, the more fully charged the vehicle is, the greater the risk of the fire. When a partition is punctured, the lithium reacts with water in the airborne moisture, generating an explosive fire with high heat. As more and more electric vehicles are being sold around the world, fire risk will greatly multiply, increasing the likelihood that you could be impacted by one in the near future. So for your own awareness, please check out this explosive fire involving several electric buses in China. And tell us if you'd want to be nearby or on board one of these buses. Take notice of how rapidly the fire spreads and how hot and destructive it is. It's unreal. And if you think this is an isolated problem, think again. 
there's already a product out to combat EV caused fires known as the fire isolator blanket, but it only works on cars. So too bad for these buses. Seeing the fire isolator blanket concept for fighting EV car fires and how it can help to minimize the collateral damage of EV fires on ferries or in car parks was the goal of this live testing demonstration video produced on November 18th, 2021. On ferries? Oh my goodness. I would be terrified to be on a ferry boat only to discover that an electric car had burst into flames on the lower deck. Like, where's my life preserver? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Talk about disaster. And what people should know is that the threat of fire is highest while the vehicle's charging. Charging. Something that's generally going to be done at night when the power rates are lower and while people are sleeping. Nice right. thing to have to fall asleep with, right? Yeah. And you can't escape the risk. What about living in an apartment complex where a neighbor charges their car in the parking garage below you? It could threaten the safety of everyone in the building. And I certainly wouldn't want to be charging one in my own garage. An EV fire could threaten my home and the safety of my entire family. But you should know that fires aren't the only dirty secret of electric cars. EV vehicles are a growing part of efforts to combat climate change. And major manufacturers are getting on board. For example, General Motors announced in January that it planned to stop making combustion engine cars entirely by 2035, and others have made very similar announcements. So while the whole push behind EVs is to go green to reduce the carbon footprint, like Kevin said in the beginning, but for starters, nearly every promoter of electric cars ignores the fact that fossil fuels like coal, gas, and oil are used to generate the electricity that those cars are being charged with. Nothing to see here, right? Just a train load of fuel on its way to charge electric cars somewhere. Right. EVs do not have a zero carbon footprint. That's a big fat lie. And furthermore, lithium itself has a huge environmental impact too. The race to find a steady source of lithium, a key active component in rechargeable electric car batteries, threatens environmental damage on an industrial scale all around the world. Lithium is found in rock and clay deposits as a solid mineral, as well as dissolved in brine. It is popular with battery manufacturers because, as the least dense metal, it stores a lot more energy for its weight. Lithium deposits have been discovered in Austria, Serbia, and Finland, but it is in Portugal that Europe's largest lithium hopes lie. The Portuguese government is preparing to offer licenses for lithium mining to international companies in a bid to exploit its white oil reserves. Sourcing lithium in its own backyard not only offers Europe simpler logistics and lower prices, but fewer transport-related emissions. It also promises Europe security of supply, an issue given greater urgency by the coronavirus pandemic's disruption of global trade. Photos like these of the disastrous effects of lithium mining have been cropping up everywhere. Makes you kind of wonder where the environmental protesters are on this one, doesn't it? <laughs> Without a doubt. Some consistency from the hardcore zealots would be appreciated yeah. here. For advocates of electric cars over an apparent concern about the environment, I ask an honest question. Do you have any idea where U.S. air quality ranks with all of our ICE vehicles among the 117 countries on the world's most polluted countries and regions list? With all the hysteria you hear in the news, you'd think the U.S. is the worst or very near the top, but we are nowhere close. Global warming, if you believe all the chatter that we hear about it these days, if it's happening, it's quite clearly happening at the destructive hands of Bangladesh, Chad, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and India, yeah. all of whom round out the top five worst countries. Even China, the notorious bad guy on so many issues, sits all the way down at number 22. Where is the U.S. on the list, you might ask? Way down at number 90. Yes, mm -hmm. We're number 90. Even without our streets being flooded with electric cars, we have produced remarkably good stewardship of the environment. Yet, not a word is breathed about that. What or who is behind all of this EV hype? During the Obama-Biden administration, hydraulic fracturing was accused of causing a number of environmental problems, including contamination of drinking water. But the administration's own Environmental Protection Agency could not validate those accusations. Now, taking action on these unfounded claims, Biden has been transitioning the transportation sector to electric vehicles that are powered by lithium batteries and require other critical metals where China, of all places, dominates the market. 
Yet, mining and processing of lithium, as it turns out, is far more environmentally harmful than the unproven allegations about fracking. In May 2016, dead fish were found in the waters of the Leaky River, where a toxic chemical leaked from the Ganzizu Ragda lithium mine. <laughs> Cow, yeah. <laughs> Cow and yak carcasses were also found floating downstream, dead from drinking contaminated water. Yeah. It was the third incident in seven years due to a sharp increase in mining activity, including operations run by China's BYD, one of the world's biggest supplier of, of lithium ion batteries. After the second incident in 2013, officials closed the mine, but true to China, fish started dying again when it reopened in April 2016. Perhaps the worst of all this news, and the news I like the least, is who holds most of the mining rights to lithium itself. China, our biggest adversary, is among the top five countries with the most lithium resources. But they didn't just stop with having their own resources. China has quietly been buying stakes in mining operations in Australia and South America, where most of the world's lithium reserves are found. China's Tianqi Lithium owns 51% of the world's largest lithium reserve in Australia, giving it a controlling interest. In 2018, the company became the second largest shareholder in Sociedad Química y Minera, the largest lithium producer in Chile. Another Chinese company, Ganfeng Lithium, had a long-term agreement to underwrite all lithium raw materials produced by Australia's Mount Marion Mine, the world's second biggest high-grade lithium reserve. Hmm. I think you get the idea that reliance on lithium battery-powered cars is not all it's cracked up to be, and in fact, that dependence could represent a grave threat to our national security. Yeah. And now you know who is behind all of this. China. Okay, now in case you're still unconvinced about how bad the reliance on lithium batteries is for America, let's chat more about the environmental impact of processing lithium ore. The lithium extraction process uses a lot of water, approximately 500,000 gallons per metric ton of lithium. Yep. To extract lithium, miners drill a hole in salt flats and pump salty, mineral-rich brine to the surface. After several months, the water evaporates, leaving a mixture of manganese, potassium, borax, and lithium salts, which is then filtered and placed into another evaporation pool. This highly toxic and contaminated water is good for nothing after this. Wow. After between 12 and 18 months of the process, the mixture is filtered so that lithium carbonate can be extracted. South America's lithium triangle, which covers parts of Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile, holds more than half the world's supply of metal beneath its salt flats but it's also one of the driest places on earth. In Chile's Salar de Atacama, mining activities consumed 65% of the region's water, which is having a large impact on local farmers to the point that they don't, they don't have any water for their animals, and some communities are having to get water elsewhere. Everywhere, there's a lithium mine, there's a huge threat to water, livestock, farming, and fishing. Do you still wonder why food shortages are happening? Just as in Tibet, there is the potential for toxic chemicals to leak from these evaporation pools into the water supply, including hydrochloric acid, which is used in the processing of lithium, and waste products that are filtered out of the brine. In Australia and North America, lithium is mined from rock using chemicals to extract it into a useful form. But this problem isn't just isolated to places overseas. There is also lithium mining in the U.S. Yep. In Nevada and a small part of Oregon where researchers have found impacts on fish as far as 150 miles downstream from a lithium processing operation. So who owns this new lithium mine in Nevada? The mine actually is run by Lithium Nevada, a subsidiary of Canadian-owned Lithium Americas. But its approval was rushed through during the coronavirus pandemic, and tribal members, ranchers, and environmentalists have concerns about the mine's potential for long-term consequences on the safety of the water and the viability of raising farm animals. Yes, during the pandemic, during a time when nothing could happen quickly, this lithium mine happened behind our backs and got rammed on our throats. The bottom line is, there is no such thing as green lithium. Unfortunately, if all of this wasn't bad enough, there's a lot more bad news to share about EVs and lithium batteries. Everyone is frustrated with high-priced cars these days, right? But have you tried buying an EV? 
EVs are the worst of them all. For example, the Tesla Long Range Model 3 starts at $57,490 and can reach a top end price of $72,490 fully loaded. Tesla Model X runs $120,990 and the Tesla Model Y runs $65,990. To add insult to injury, the longevity of an electric car just isn't there. Your electric car almost becomes a throwaway vehicle when the battery dies, with replacement battery costs being through the roof. And what's the likelihood that you'll grow tired of waiting hours for your car to charge, so you'll just get one of those high rate chargers? High rate chargers may get your battery charged faster, but they also bring your battery much quicker to an early death. And as already mentioned, then you have nothing. And we haven't even discussed range concerns yet. Nope. Articles like this one, electric car range and five reasons why your range anxiety is unwarranted are plentiful on the internet. What they say is that many potential electric vehicles, EV drivers, suffer from range anxiety, the fear that their car's battery will die on them mid-trip. They go on to say the truth is that that scenario is not very likely to happen. But all of that cover ignores the fact that emergency calls for dead vehicles are spiking and they can't be towed like a regular car. All the wheels have to be off the ground. Running out of gas might seem to be as common as running out of a charge, but it is not. In the UK, emergency calls for empty gas tanks is only 0.6% of total calls. Dead EV calls are now 4% of all calls and rising and there are far fewer evs on the road yeah there's also the bothersome fact that the typical ice vehicle has a range of 400 miles which is double that of many evs if you go cheaper with an ev it can be a lot worse like only 100 miles of range and for the ice vehicle you just add gas and in minutes you're back on the road for the ev if you charge it slowly to make the battery last give sure. it a longer battery life you could be stuck most of the day, which is the reason most people will go for the rapid DC chargers for 30 to 45 minutes, a tactic that greatly reduces battery life. Also well-justified worldwide concerns are that as private electric vehicles become more popular, each country's electricity infrastructure is woefully underdeveloped to facilitate widespread fast charging. The U.S. power grid, like many others around the globe, isn't built to support a world in which half the cars on the road are EVs. The system needs an upgrade to support that transition, and right now, most of the energy for EVs, as mentioned earlier, comes directly from natural gas, coal, nuclear, and hydroelectric dams. Some states have taken drastic action to aid in their EV push. For example, California cities just banned new gas station construction July 12th as prices top $6 a gallon. And get this, Petaluma Councilman Delinda Fisher said, we didn't know what we were doing. Actually, we didn't know we were the first in the world when we banned gas stations. <laughs> didn't and even now know. other cities and counties in California are following suit. But Kevin Slagle, a spokesperson for Western States Petroleum Association, told the paper that the ban will likely have unintended consequences. Bans on gas stations will only make it more difficult for motorists who use gas-powered vehicles. Taking what we're facing today, a lot of demand and not a lot of supply, if you start taking stations out, new and existing, if you make a commodity tougher to find, that means higher costs. Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Earlier this week, Consumer Reports released a survey of 8,000 Americans about owning electric vehicles. 61% said they didn't want one because it would be too hard to charge. And 55% said the mileage per charge isn't high enough. Yep. However, the most interesting part is that 14% of the consumers said they would definitely buy an electric car today if they were to buy up from just 4% in 2020. So more of you are buying into the hype. There's also a reliability issue. In a study dated June 28, 2022 by JD Power, internal combustion vehicles averaged 175 problems per 100 vehicles. Plug-in hybrids have 239 problems per 100 and battery electric vehicles have 240. Vehicle problems have reached a record high in the 36 year history of this JD Power study. More problems than ever before, even with all the new technologies? Even with all the technologies. Hmm. Automakers try to blame COVID and chip shortages, but the truth is the ball is in their court. Car makers are pushing out junk to the market. To be honest, this is not a video we really wanted to do and we delayed it for some time, 
but there is an abundance of false and misleading information about EVs out there. All we hear about EVs is the good old green stuff, and it's mostly nonsense. Green like money, huh? <laughs> green as in money, yeah. <laughs> we thought you needed to hear the other side of these issues. This is one of our longer videos recently, and yet there was so much more that we could have shared. We could have spent all day here. What I do think is that everyone should stop believing the lie that EVs are zero emissions because they most certainly are not. Do your homework, people. If you learned something today and you'd like to say thanks for our video with a tip, the links appearing on the screen now will be easy to find down below. And if you were glad that we covered this story, homework guy style, we'd appreciate you giving us a great big thumbs up and please tell us what you think in the comment section down below. Yeah. And if you're not already on board with us, don't forget to subscribe. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's exactly what we strive to do in every video we produce. The bottom line of today's video for anyone car shopping is the more you know about EVs, the less thrilled you are about jumping into one. They are not all they're cracked up to be. Shocking, yeah. I know. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.